This farm is weeding his crop using the rotary weeder. It is hard work, but still he is better off than his fellow rice farmers who do weeding by hand. You have to walk about 10 kilometers in this bent position to weed just one hectare of rice. Now that's hard work. Hand weeding is really tough. Two weeks after planting you start to see weeds, and that's the time you start hand weeding. There are lots of challenges. You get back pain from the bending over for a long time, and when you get home, you're too tired from work to help your family. Secondly, snail shells, cutters, and insect biters. Rough leaves cut our hands, so we face problems throughout the weeding process. Weeding usually takes up a lot of time, much more than any other management practice necessary for growing rice. I have to hand weed my farm three times. It takes me a lot of time to complete the job because it's really hard work. I can't do it just once. But weeding is a must. If you don't take care of the weeds, your yields will be very low. Weeds compete with the rice for nutrients, water and sunlight. Hence, the more weeds there are, the less of these will remain available for the rice crop to grow and produce grains. To obtain good yields, weeds need to be controlled at least once, but often twice or more, before the crop's canopy is closed. Weeds can be controlled in different ways, by hand, by herbicides, or using tools. The best approach is to combine several methods. In such an integrated approach, land preparation, transplanting and flooding are all important processes. By transplanting in a clean and level field with a permanent layer of water, weed problems can be reduced. Weeds that still appear can then be controlled by hand weeding, herbicides or mechanical tools, such as the rotary weeder. The rotary weeder is a mechanical weeding tool you can push or pull in between the rows to uproot and bury weeds. Weeding with the rotary weeder is two to three times quicker than doing it by hand. It is not expensive and once bought can serve you for several seasons. <laughs> When you hand weed, you take all the weeds out of the soil. When using a rotary weeder instead of removing the weeds, they are cut down and buried and add nutrients to the soil. That's what the rotary teeth do. Secondly, the weeder doesn't kill microorganisms in the soil. Compared to herbicides, the rotary weeder is better for your health, better for the environment, and much cheaper. It is also cheaper because for about $25, I have the weeder for about 10 years, but herbicides needs to be bought yearly. Using the rotary weeder requires line planting or sowing, and while this takes more time than broadcast sowing, the investment will pay off as you will need much less time for weeding later on. The first time when I didn't understand how to transplant in parallel rows, I thought it was a difficult job to do, but later I realized it was easy and the best method to transplant. First, it made it easy to weed, and secondly, when I use the weeder, I only take a few days. A direct sown crop will require much more time for weeding during the early stages of the crop. A line transplanted crop yields more, is more competitive against weeds, and is easier to access. Hence, weed control in rice is of utmost importance. If you don't weed, the crop won't produce a good yield.
It is better to use a combination of methods rather than a single method to control weeds. After levelling, flooding and transplanting, weeds can be best controlled by using a rotary weeder. The rotary weeder is easy to use, time-saving and relatively cheap. Using the rotary weeder requires line planting or sowing, and while this takes more time than broadcast sowing, the investment will pay off as you will need much less time for weeding later on. Let's take a closer look at this tool. There are different types of rotary weeders, but they usually have two rotating drums with straight, bent or twisted teeth or spikes. Not all types of teeth are suitable for all types of soil. For instance, if you have to work in heavy clay soil, you need to make sure the teeth are not too close to each other, because the soil can easily get stuck between the teeth. You have to find out which type works best in your field and adjust the weeder if necessary. A floater in front is meant to guide the weeder through the crop to prevent the weeder digging into the soil. The weeder has a handle and an arm, so you can push and pull it through the crop. The weeder is specially made. It has teeth that cuts the weeds and buries them into the soil. It also has a floater to level the soil so that the teeth can properly function. The arm is adjustable with holes to suit one's height. The handle makes it easy to push. Most rotary weeders are adjustable. Depending on the model you have and the blacksmith who made it, you can change the angle of the rod and the floater. Some have adjustable floater depths and the width of the weeder can be modified to fit better to the rows of the crop. Now that we know what the weeder looks like, you might wonder where or how you can get such tools. I bought this machine from a blacksmith in our village for $25. It has many benefits compared to those who weed by hands. The biggest is that it takes less time to weed the farm. You can purchase a rotary weeder at the local blacksmith workshop. If he doesn't know how to make them, ask another blacksmith or ask extension workers or other farmers about it. Different organizations like the Ministry of Agriculture Agricultural Research Institutes and Africa Rice have specialized staff that can provide assistance too. If you ask a blacksmith to make this weeder for you, make sure he makes it such that it can be adjusted according to your needs. The weeder can be adjusted through these holes by widening or narrowing its width. The height can be adjusted by loosening the bolts and use these holes to make the road higher or lower depending on your height. You can also make holes here to make the floater adjustable in height. Ask the blacksmith if you can try it out before he finalizes it, so that you are sure it meets the requirements of you and your crop. Discuss the perfect model with your blacksmith and make sure the tool suits you. Now that we know more about the rotary weeder and how to obtain and adjust it, let us see what it takes to actually use the tool in your rice field. As mentioned before, an important issue to take into account when using the rotary weeder is the need for planting or sowing in lines with fixed planting distances. Depending on the width of the rotary weeder, the row distance could be 20 to 25 centimeters. A rule of thumb is to observe a space of at least two and a half centimeters at each side of the weeder. If the weeder is 15 centimeters, the row distance should be at least 20 centimeters. Keep in mind that planting distances wider than that may make weeding easier but will stimulate more weeds to grow and also reduces the number of plants per area and hence grain yield. The weeder can only control the weeds between the rows. If there are any weeds left in the row they should be uprooted by hand after the passage of the weeder. If the rice is transplanted in a square planting pattern so you get rows going both ways the rotary weeder can travel in both directions through the crop. You can then either do both directions at the same time without additional hand weeding or only in one direction followed by hand weeding if necessary. Then next time you can weed in the other direction. 
How to actually use the rotary weeder depends on how many weeds you have in your crop and how much time you have at hand. You should try out yourself what works best for you and your crop. Now look at how these farmers make sure they transplant at a fixed planting space and in nice straight rows. You can use a string with marks to indicate where to plant. When one row of transplanting is finished, you can move the string to the next row. Line tracers are useful tools to make square plant patterns. Transplanting of the rice seedlings can then be done at each intersection. Uh, Whenever I transplant my crops, I use this 25 cm spacing root. Whenever I'm on the farm, I start from one side, where I put my straight string from one end to the other. From there, I start using the spacing root, moving horizontally and vertically. Then you can see a square grid from one end to the other. Transplanting should be done when the seedlings are still young, between 15 and 20 days, or at the 3 to 5 leaf stage, and you can plant 1 to 3 seedlings per hill. The seedlings should not be planted too deep. As a general rule, the white part of the stem of the plant marks the depth of planting. Make sure the green part stays above ground. Transplanting should be done in saturated or superficially flooded soils and soon after planting you can flood your field to a depth of about 5 cm to prevent some weed species from emerging, but make sure the rice is not submerged. Hence water management is a second important point of attention. The same flood layer that is necessary to control weeds is also necessary for efficient use of the rotary weeder. <laughs> The importance of having water on the fields is so that the rotary weeder can properly function. Less water makes the mud stick to the teeth and makes it difficult to rotate. Indeed, if you don't put water on your field, operating the rotary weeder will be very hard as the soil will get stuck between the teeth. The best thing to do is to test the weeder in a small part of your field to make sure it's properly working before you really start. The next important thing to keep in mind is the timing. Just like other weed control measures, the rotary weeder should be used when there are enough weeds and only in the early crop stages. The best timing is when the weeds have two to three leaves. If the rice plants are too big, you can easily damage them with the weeder, and when the weeds are small, they are much easier to control. <laughs> I use this weeder to simplify my work. I prefer using it when the weeds are still small and the weeder works well by mixing the weeds with soil. But when the weeds are bigger, it's difficult to work with the weeder. You can weed at two to three weeks after transplanting and then about two to three weeks later if there are many weeds. But remember that weeds only harm the rice in the early stages of your crop and that weeds should not grow too big. When the crop covers the soil well, you don't need to weed anymore. Now that we know how to plant the crop and manage the water, and we know when to weed, let's take a closer look at how the weeding is actually done. You should work systematically, weeding row by row. When you finish, don't forget to pass through your field to handpick surviving weeds near the rice plants, if there are many weeds left. In summary, there are four main points to take into account when using the rotary weeder. 1. You need to plant or sow in rows with fixed distances between the rows, possibly with fixed plant distances in the row, for instance 20 by 20 centimetres. This will allow you to weed in two directions if necessary. 2. Make sure your field is levelled and flooded with a layer of water of at least 5 centimetres. This will make operating the weeder easier. 3. Test and adjust the weeders before the actual operation. Make sure the weeder is easy to use that it uproots and incorporates the weed and that it does not damage the crop. 4. Do the weeding when the weeds are small and only when the rice crop has not yet closed so that you can still see open spaces in the rows. Remember that small weeds are easier to control. The best timing is when the weeds have two to three leaves. The number of weeding times is not fixed 
It depends on the weediness of your field and on the available time. You have to see for yourself what works best in your field. Next, you should be able to pay for the weeder. They cost between $25 and $40. If you cannot afford to buy a weeder yourself, you can share the costs with a group of farmers. As we heard before, you can also make a little money by renting it out or by offering weeding as a service. This weeder gives me several advantages. I weed my farm quickly. At the same time, I can rent it out to other farmers who pay me in return for its service. By being creative, you can find a way to purchase and use this tool and make weeding an easier and quicker job. Combining weed control measures works best and the rotary weeder is compatible with most other weed control measures. The rotary weeder can control weeds in the row much faster than can be done by hand. The rotary weeder requires planting or sowing in rows, possibly at equal row and plant distance, to enable to pass in two directions if necessary. The row distance should be wider than the weeder by at least 2.5 cm at each side of the weeder. Weeds should be controlled early. When the weeds are small, they are easy to control. The weeder should be used with water on the field. Purchasing and using a weeder can be done with a group. It will be cheaper and easier. Contact Extension Services, National Research Institutes, the Ministry or Africa Rice for more information such as technical drawings. By improving weed management, you can raise your yields. By using labour-saving weeding tools like the Rotary Weeder, you can obtain these higher yields while saving time for other things.